Hello there all readers of my book, which actually turns out to be a lot of you guys. And I thank you for doing so. Anyway, this has been way overdue. This is the eighth part of my book. And I am uh and I thank you all for once again for for uh reading it. And let me just go to it right now. Which would be two eighty four. Part eight would be the unexpected. I'm gonna let to uh, recap, lastly, um, our hero has finally gone back in time again, and he's found the hourglass, leaving poor Dragonite behind. Will we ever see him again? Will the LSRT ever be restored? Who knows? At this point, anything could happen. Sorry about that. I didn't realize I didn't, did not have a drink of water with me, and I know I'm going to need it for reading. And I apologize if my voice sounds raspy. I was going to upload this on Sunday, but my voice was way too cracky or whatever to even consider reading. But now it's better, so <clears throat> let's continue on with the unexpected. It was the same dizzy procedure for a third time, although it was not as bad of a feeling this time. My vision was only slightly blurry, and it cleared up quickly to reveal the night of the DMA. This is exactly where I wanted to be, or at least I thought it was. Oh no, brother, this is bad. The soul do is broken. I know, sis. I'm just as scared as you are. I turned and looked at them along with Bianca and Lorenzo, who were standing next to them with just as frightened faces. I then looked at the spot on the DMA where the soul do was supposed to be, but it wasn't in there. The two thieves, however, were still in that control center and part of the DMA, trapped like rats. Dang it! Ugh, this isn't... What the... Shut up! This isn't exactly where I wanted to be. I was frustrated, which is actually funny because in real life I'm frustrated now because of that message. But anyway, I just couldn't get the hang of controlling the hourglass correctly. My head, my head still felt lightheaded, so I didn't want to time travel again. What really kept me from using the hourglass was the fact that I was frozen from seeing the Latis. Seeing both Latias and Latios live made me feel so good inside. But then that feeling, good feeling disappeared when I realized that they might not be alive for long. That wave is coming, and there's nothing to prevent it. Oh, great. I have to talk like Lorenzo? This isn't going to be good. Hold on. <clears throat> okay, let's see. I think, I think I know what might happen next. Quick, we should go outside! The four of them start to walk towards the balcony. I still had, I still stand motionless in, the, in thought while they walk past me. Latias notices me standing still and flies over to check on me. My, will you shut up? What the hell? No matter how many times I click on do not ask me again, it asks me. Oh, the last time I clicked on X, but whatever. I apologize. Hopefully that message will not appear again. She rubs her head up against my neck. I snap out of thinking and, and feel Latias' head on my neck. Uh, oh, uh, sorry Latias. I, I was just thinking about what's going to happen next and how to stop it from happening. <laughs> oh, well, uh, please follow us outside, Mike. I, I really feel scared, and I want you by me on my brother's side. Uh, oh, all right, let's go. I followed her outside to the balcony and stood there with the others. Soon the whole wave scene started to play itself again. The water withdrew itself from the canals and entered the ocean. And then that giant tsunami came into view. I look at Latias on my left, and then I look at her brother on my right. Both of them looked terrified. Well, Latias didn't really show it on his face, but the way he stared at the ocean. That's how I could tell. Latios, he continues to stare at the ocean. Yes, Mike? You, you must be wondering what's about to happen next, aren't you? <sighs> yes, I am. And honestly, I'll admit that I'm scared about it. Uh, but I know what must be done in order to save the island. We need to stop that wave. Oh, I'm so scared! The poker speak amulet translated the conversation clearly to Lorenzo and Bianca. They could not help but to look at us and listen. It's okay, sister. Everything will be fine. But, Latios, you must still feel very weak from all what has happened to you. Yes. My physical condi condition is not really good at all. But I have no choice. That wave must be stopped. Oh, 
Well, there must be a way to make you gain strength or something. But ready, Latias? I began searching my pockets all of a sudden. While I was doing so, I find the right thing needed for this situation. Yes, brother, I am. They were just about to take off when I called out. Wait! I got it! Both of them quickly look over to me. I hold and hold in front of them in my hand four big, juicy, energizing citrus berries. Yes! Citrus berries! These will help you two gain your strength back. I quickly split the berries up evenly and hold, hold the two in each hand. Eat the berries, you two. You need them. Latios eats his immediately, but Latias doesn't even take a bite out of hers. Oh, go ahead, Latias. Eat them. No. <laughs> no thanks, Mike. I feel scared, but not hurt or weak. Give them to my brother. She was right. Latios really did need the berries more than she did. Latios was shocked by that capture net and had his energy drained for being used as a power supply. Latias only used a couple of her moves and max during the whole crisis adventure at that point. Oh, alright, yeah. I, I can agree that Latios needs some more. Here, here you go. Thank you, sis. Latios quickly eats the berries on in one big bite. Soon he was feeling them five times better. Oh, wow. Those berries really work, huh? I feel great! Oh, thank you, Mike. I'm very grateful. <laughs> You're welcome, buddy. Now go stop that wave. Yes, let's go, sis. Full speed ahead. All right, brother, I'm ready. The two of them took off like jets toward the wave. I still was scared at the scene, even though I tried to act like I wasn't. This part haunted my dreams, and seeing it live again made it no less scary. Why is that a comma? That shouldn't be a comma! That should be... Uh, whatever. Why, while staring out at the wave, I noticed something about Latios after I gave him the berries. Along with energy, Latios gained confidence. His attitude changed completely. He didn't show a sign of being scared after eating those berries. Maybe gaining strength and confidence is just enough to get them through this. I looked to my left to check on Bianca and Lorenzo. Both of them are staring out at that wave of scared expressions. I walk over to them to comfort them. I then stare at the scene myself. I knew that any second now that the uh, that the Lattes would make contact with that wave, and that bright explosion of psychic energy would appear. Do you think that Latias and Latios would make it out uh, all right? I'm not sure, son. But with all what I heard from the legend, I'm not so not thinking this is a good future for Latios. Hmm. I continued to stare at the ocean. I was waiting for that bright explosion. And the more I waited, the more nervous I got. I thought about the time before, and I was thankful that I didn't make the same mistake twice. I had enough common sense this time to know that riding on Matios was not a good idea. I suddenly got startled from the giant flash from the wave in the distance. That's what I was waiting for. But now I'm waiting for that bright beam of light from the ground to the sky. The light of Latios vanishing. Time felt like it was going so slowly. Seconds were brutally long to me. I felt it I had waited for what felt like an hour, but in reality it was seven minutes. But even that amount of time felt like it was too much. There was nothing in the sky. I didn't notice that the water had returned to the city's canal right on cue. But no light. Something wasn't right, it felt to me. I decided to share that my feeling with Bianca and Lorenzo beside me. I think something's wrong here. What do you mean? I, I thought there would be like a bright beam of light going to the sky. The, the light of Latios. Oh, I see. The sign of Latios having done his duty, you mean. That's another way to put it. Yes. His father vanished with a bright beam of light I, noti I noticed when he brought the water to our town. It would only be logical to think that his son would do the same. Maybe he sh we should go down there, you know, to check on things. Yeah, you're right. I think we should go too. Right, off to the beach then. The three, the three of us walked back to the museum from that balcony. While walking was with them, I noticed I was em walking empty-handed. I lost the hourglass again. I looked around the DMA area from the top floor, but I didn't see it. I thought that it could be out on the balcony. I had to go check. Hey, you two... Wait right there a second. I think I left something behind. Alright, we'll be right here for you. I nod to them and then jog back out outside the balcony. I saw my hourglass sitting right there in the center. I picked it up and stared at it. I was baffled. I didn't even remember putting it down. 
Yeah, maybe I did while well, I searched for those berries for the Lattes. Oh, wait, I need to get going. The Lattes are in need of a checkup from the three of us. There's no time to waste here. I put my the hourglass back in my pocket. It was a mighty tight squeeze, but it was safe now, at least. I then jogged, ba jogged back to Lorenzo and Bianca. Did you find what you lost? Yeah, I did. It was on the ground over there, but now it's in my pocket, so I can't lose it again. I tapped the pocket with my left, uh, with my hand, as I said that. Both of them stare at it with an examining look. What is it? It's my time travel hourglass. I cut Lorenzo off and he was about to say something. I know, I know, I told you that and everyone else I didn't know how to return on my own time period. Sorry for lying, but I, I did it so there would be no accidental time traveling. I don't want anyone to get stuck in the future or past, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I see. Well, that's quite alright then. Okay, let's get going to the ocean. We need to see if Latios and Latios are alright. I hope the two of them are okay. They're too young to have their lives at now. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> the three of us resume our advance to the ocean's edge. We had to quicken our pace, though, because of the fact that dawn was approaching. I knew that in a matter of 10 to 15 minutes or so, that sun would be poking above the ocean. So, Mike, is that hourglass what you used to come here to Altamar? Yep, that's right. I sounded calm and nice, but I honestly grew slightly frustrated from having to repeat myself to them. I told the whole time travel story to them in uh, any way while making several things up, such as why I acted like I got knocked out. I hated to explain things, and repeating the same explanation again did not make me like it anymore. Well, that's not quite Lorenzo and Bianca's fault. That's one of the things with time traveling. You have to be aware of how far back in time you go. If you go too far back, then things may be erased, inexistent, or unheard of. And, well, yeah, you know. The, ba the background of Altamar's seas were getting brighter. The three of us tried to walk through the town as we quickly as quickly as we could. After about five minutes or so, we made it to the water's edge. The three of us then stared at the ocean in all different directions, searching for the two island guardians. Uh, do you see them? No, no. Uh, maybe we should call out to them? Yeah. Yes, if they are out there, then maybe they will hear us. We started calling out to the two Eon Pokemon, saying their names nice and clear. Latios! Latios! Hey, Latios, where are you? We shouted out at the sea for well over a minute before we stopped. We then stared out beyond the city, but neither Latios nor Latios were seen. <sighs> hmm, I guess they aren't out there. I'm guessing at this point that the two of them did not make it through after all. It appears that stopping the wave was too much for them. Oh, I really wish they made it. I feel so bad. Bianca then starts to cry a little. I felt bad too. My heart was hurting from the end result. I really thought those citrus berries I gave Latios would have helped them survive. I stare out into the sunrise over the sea and wonder, why? The only reason I can think of is... <sighs> well, things happen for a reason, I suppose. The three of us remain speechless for a while now. Lorenzo breaks the silence after he noticed... After he noticed... Why does have to re notice this appear twice? I don't remember writing it, and I freaking proofread this thing seven times. I think it's just Microsoft Word. Lorenzo breaks the silence after he notices the brightness of the sky. Well, dawn is here, and boy is that sky bright. Yeah, it is. So what do we do now? Well, I suppose that we should get back to the house and rest. We all had a long and tiring night. I'm exhausted anyway. I don't know about you two. Yeah, I am. Um, was I tired though? Even though I just arrived on this point at the time not too long ago, I was tired. I remembered that at the last time I slept, I, I slept was on that island. I did get a lot of different. I did a lot of different things as the day went on, and the more I thought of that day, the more tired I became until I eventually yawned. <laughs> <sighs> oh, 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 yeah, <laughs> I guess I'm tired too. Well then, let's go. The two of them turn around and walk away from the ocean. I follow them soon afterward, but I stop a few steps in. I just, I just had turned around and looked at, at that ocean again. I wanted to know what happened to the Lattes. I got lost at the sight again and fell into a flashback. 
I suddenly saw myself riding on Lazio's in that wave-stopping incident. I noticed how scared all three of us were. Suddenly, the flashback changed to Lazio's and I being captured in a shock net. I remember the, that plan we made to escape, but we forgot about their treasures and we had to go back. And then again, the scene changed. Then it was now showing the big fight between the Lattes and Zapdos. What a hard fight that was. Ugh, if only I didn't run away and drop my Pokemon. That never would have happened. Oh, wait, another scene change. And now it displayed Latios being stuck in the DMA. Oh, what a horrible sight that was, too. Latios was drained of his energy as if he were a battery. It was too horrible to watch, but wait, again with the change of memory. Now it's back to the wave stopping scene again. No, wait. No, this was the most recent wave stop. I could tell because I was not riding on Latios this time. I saw them head towards the wave, and then, flash! A bright light suddenly blinded me, startled me greatly. Ah! La Latios! Latios! I rubbed my eyes and then looked at, and then took another look. It appeared that the sun finally poked its way above the water, and the, that and that bright beams of light from the sun stabbed me out of my flashback. Oh, it was, uh, it was just oh, uh, what happened to you two? I almost, it almost made me cry that my buddies did not return. I was really hoping that the whole wave scene would not fully repeat itself. Still, I ask, why? Mike! Hey, Mike! <clears throat> I, look, I look around to see both him and Bianca waving to me to, to get me to go with them. I ran over to catch up. Hey, Mike, what happened to you? We almost left you behind. Oh, sorry. I just got lost in thought back there. Thinking about the Lottis again, hmm? Yeah. You know... I just know something isn't right here. I still have the strangest feeling that something's going on with them. Really? Like what? I'm not sure, but I can feel it in my gut. But, anyway, you know... We should get going to your house. I think that may be this gut feeling, maybe just stress from me being tired. Alright, so let's head off then. Don't fall behind now, Mike. She gives me a small smile. <sighs> no worries. I'll be right behind you two. As we headed toward Lorenzo's house, I thought about the flashback again. I felt bad thinking about it. I just realized uh, now all the trouble, stress, and pain that I put the Lottis through. And it was all mainly to get them back li to living with me and to restart the LSRT. I thought, just for a moment, that maybe I was being selfish this whole time. Because I was only thinking of what I wanted. But then I rethought the whole thing over, and I realized that I knew that, in a way, all the LSRT members wanted this back too. My heart was in the right place. It's just... that I wish that it wasn't this dang hard to get it back. And it still hasn't happened yet. Well, we're here, home after a long night. We were approaching the kitchen entrance of his, of his house as he said that. He was about to unlock the door when he realized it was already open. He pushes the door open and we all walk inside. Ugh. With, all, with how bright it is, I feel like I should be having breakfast and ready for the day, but... Oh, I'm so tired. Me too, son. We, we, we need the last few hours of sleep for the incoming day. So the guest room is yours again to sleep in. Oh, thanks, Lorenzo. And both of you have a good night. Or day. Or, well, you know. <laughs> the two of them laugh at the statement. Have a good sleep, Mike. The three of us then head to our bedrooms to get some sleep. While in the guest room, I pulled down the, the shades to prevent the sun from lighting up my room. I then got into the guest bed and lay down. <clears throat> I once again had the wave scene replay in my head. I tried to think of the situation a bit more, but suddenly I could feel my eyes going heavier. It got to the point where I was too tired to even think. I gave in from the fact that my body desperately needed rest, and I soon fell into a deep and dreamless sleep. Drink time. I feel my body wake up hours later. I got up and stretched my body out. After open, opening the shades and taking a quick peek outside, I changed the other... I checked the other bedrooms to see if Flavianca and Lorenzo were still sleeping. It turned out that they were already up and running. I hurried down the stairs to check on them there, but it also turned out they weren't there either. Bianca, Lorenzo, you two still here? Mike, is that you? If so, I'm here in my workshop. 
After hearing that, I quickly got out of the house and into the workshop. Ah, there you are. I didn't think you would be awake and working after last night. It's only noon, you know. Yes, I do. Honestly, I'm not. If I'm not working on boat, I'm not. Honestly, honestly, I'm not working on boats today. I'm working. I'm only in my workshop to make this. He holds up what looks like an unfinished sign. At first, I have. I gave a clueless kind of look, but a few seconds later, I realized what it was. The memorial. I immediately thought of Dragonite and I reading the memorial in front of the swing tree. I then grew a sad face. What's the matter, son? You look like you're feeling down. Uh, oh, I tried to change my expression. I'm still just a little tired. I only woke up ten minutes ago. I see. So, what is that thing there? Hmm. This is going to be a plaque that will honor our beloved guardians. Oh, my sad expression grew back. So I take it that Latias and Latios never returned? I'm afraid so, Mike. The first thing I did when I got up this morning was to go to the garden and call out for the two of them. Unfortunately, they never showed up. Uh, uh, it just feels so awful that they didn't make it. Me too. There was a long pause. Well, I'm probably going to go to the garden in a bit, after a walk, that is. Oh, alright, I'll possibly meet you there later on. Once I'm done with this plaque here, I will put it somewhere in the garden. Okay, see you later then. Bye, Mike. I walk out of the workshop and past the house. I decided to follow the pathway next to their house that led to the secret garden. On the way, be on the way I begin to think yet again. As soon as I thought about what might have the best thing to do next, I suddenly felt the bul uh, bulginess of my pocket. I knew what I knew that the hourglass was in there. Maybe the use of it would be best. I look up to the, from the pocket to see if anyone's in the alleyway with me. I notice that there was some someone ahead of me. It, it looked closer. It, I looked closer to the person realized it was Bianca, and there was no hat on her. Latias? I quickly jogged over to her. My heart began to race like mad. I stopped stopped right in front of her and gave her gave a big smile. Latias, you're back! I put my arms around her and gave her a hug. I then backed up a bit while Hat still having my arms and her shoulders. Oh, I was so worried. I thought you were gone. She said nothing back to me. Instead, she only gave me a look of sadness. After several seconds, she responded, I I'm sorry, Mike, but I'm not Latias. My eyes widened and I took my arms off of her shoulders. I was confused and lost. What? Wait, 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 you're not, but... But you're not wearing a hat! I, I know. I, I didn't put it on yet because I was in the wash this morning. Ugh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I stare at her for a few seconds with that same lost look. I then put my hands, hands on my face. Ugh. Oh, I can't believe it. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to trick you like that, honest. Ugh. I know. I know. I should. I should have known better because your grandfather just said that he didn't see the lottie of the garden. <sighs> it's just that, well, uh, I really want to see them again. Me too. Both of us said nothing for a while. I hang my head down and stare at the ground. Mike, I look up at her and feel even worse for some reason. In my mind, it felt like I should just resume walking. I, I, I gotta go. I walk past her and continue down the road. Yanka just looks at me with a guilty look as she wa watches me walk farther away from her. I I I'm sorry. Even though it wasn't her fault, I felt a little angry and was that I was tricked. I really let seeing Latias get to me. I tried to forget that moment and continue to walk on in the garden. At the garden's entrance, I looked down on the other road by the fake wall and then down at the road where I came from. Both roads were bare. So in result, I walked through the fake wall and down to the garden. I stood there and at the front of the garden and looked at the, the scenery. It looked as beautiful and lifelike as always. But, but the sight did not make me feel much better. I walked to the stairs and sat down a couple of steps in. I started this just to just stare at the garden with no thoughts on the mind. Several seconds, the bulky pocket feeling came back. I took, I took the hourglass out and looked at it. The more I looked at it, the more of the other feeling appeared. I told myself that I would, in just a moment. I didn't I didn't want to time travel right now. I put the hourglass down on the step next to me where I was sitting. I then relaxed my body and sat on the steps quietly. About five minutes went by. 
My body was getting so relaxed that I was almost asleep. While in this relaxed state, I heard a whine in my head. That whine like, like sound made me smile slightly, because it reminded me of the last ones. A couple of seconds later, I heard another whine. This one seemed louder than the last one. Then several more seconds passed. Mike, is that you? Hearing that voice made me wide awake. I stood up and looked behind me to see one of the two beings I was hoping to see. What? Yes, it's you. You're alive. I got up and I got up, walked up to the stairs to her. I put my arms around her neck and gave her a hug. I felt I felt as if I had been through this moment once before. <laughs> oh, Mike, it's so nice to see you. Oh, it's so nice to see you too, Latia. I thought you weren't going to make it. Me too. That was one of the most scariest moments of my life. Mine too, honestly. Just thinking about you and your brother flying towards that wave in the dark night. It's quite scary to think. Wait a minute. Um, where is Latios? She looks at me for a moment, and then she looks around for where she is. Oh, I'm not sure. He was, he was at the entrance when I came over here to see you. Wait, you're saying that Latios is alive? <laughs> she looks at me and gives me an eyes closed smile. Yeah, he is. My brother is alive. Hearing her say that made my heart race. I, I felt very good, really good all of a sudden. Oh, I see him. Let me go get him. She f she flies past the stairs and calls out to Latios. Brother, can you come over here, please? She he hears his sister's call and looks at her. She uh, then he flies over to her. Yes, sis, do you need anything? Look who's here! He then looks at me. Oh, I see. He, he flies over to me and levitates beside me. Latios! Oh, Latios, it's so good to see your face again. I'm so happy you're alive. I gave him a big hug. I gave him a hug similar to the one I gave the one. Similar to the one I gave to Latios. I, <clears throat> I then look at him with a smile. However, when, when I saw the expression on his face, my smile disappeared. It's... It is good to see you too, Mike. Latios, are, are you feeling okay, buddy? You should be. My citrus berry plan worked. Not exactly. Huh? What do you mean? You and your sister are both alive. Both of you survived the wave stopping moment. So the plan worked out all right. Right? Yes, you are right. The two of us are okay. But the island is not so much. Your plan might have had some side effects. Oh. Uh, well, what kind of side effects? I have my sister stand next to you so I can show you. Latias, may you, may you do so, please? Oh, yes, of course. She follows her brother's request. Then the two of them look at each other for a moment. In doing so, both of their eyes glow bright white. As, as soon as I saw this, I knew that sight sharing would begin in a moment. I saw Latias turn invisible in front of me, and then I started to see what he was seeing. At, the, at first, I, it was the front of the garden. But then I see Latios going through the garden entrance. I was wondering where on Ultimar Latios was going, because now he was going through some alleyways. When he got when he got to a large canal in the middle of the island, that's when I, that's when I knew what Latios wanted to show me. He start I started to heat up from seeing the sight. <gasps> the canals are, are empty. Indeed they were. Just like when the Soldu broke on that night, the canals were drained of their water. Now they were roads once again. Just, it is such a horrible sight. I can't stand looking at it. Me too. Sight sharing suddenly ended right there. I was still in shock from what I saw through the eyes of Latios. Wow, I had no idea that even happened. But how did it happen? I look, I look over to, at Latias to see if she, she would have the answer. She closed her eyes and frowned and then looked the other way. I don't know, Mike, but all I do know is that I don't like it. Not one bit. The island is, is a lot better with the water and the canals. Yeah, I agree with you there. I suddenly see Latios appear at the garden entrance. He flies over to us. Oh, Latios, I, I, I'm sorry that the water is gone. That isn't the only thing that's gone. He, f he begins to fly slowly away. Latios and I both follow him to the spot that he wants to go to. That spot was the well, and noticing that made me grow nervous. The Soldu isn't really. See for yourself. I go up to the well and look inside. I discover that he is right. There is no Soldu in the well. Oh no. That's just awful. I know. This, this is the reason why there is no water in the canals. 
The soul dew, as you know, was broken on that night, and because of this, the water balance of the island is broken too. That's terrible! Hmm. Honestly, I wish I did pass away on that night of the t uh, on that time of the stopping the wave. Latios and I both look at him in shock. Latios, why would you say that? Oh, I love living. Don't get me, don't get me wrong, but I feel like in my heart and soul that I was supposed to pass on that night in order to take the place of my father. I believe that is how the prophecy goes. He's right. The prophecy does go like that. Latios is supposed to sacrifice himself to become the new soul dew and take his father's place. Uh, I feel like this whole thing was my fault for some reason. Oh, Latios, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking. Ugh, I never should have given you those berries. Mike, it's fine. I know how badly you wanted my sister and I to live. You were thinking of us. You just had no idea something like this would happen. The canal's loss of water is not your fault. Really? Yes. In fact, I don't think it would have made a difference whether you gave me those citrus berries or not. I don't know if Latios is really telling the truth, or if he just said that to make me feel better. Either way, I was happy he said that. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, thanks, Latios. There was a pause for a brief moment after that. So, what do we do now? I don't know, Mike. Uh, do you want to play, Latios? She looked at me with a sad face. I'm sorry, Mike, uh, but I don't feel like playing anything right now. That was probably the first time that I ever heard her say that. Latias always loves playing with others. She must be upset about what happened to the island. I don't blame her. I would act the same way if my home was ruined. Oh. Well, uh, have you two met up with Bianca and Lorenzo ever since you returned? No, we haven't yet. We came right here first. Oh, okay. Well, I believe they are at their house. I bet they would love to see you. I know I do. Oh. Um, all right. Well, why don't you get them and bring them here? We aren't leaving the garden any time soon. Okay, I will. I'll bring them back in a moment. Take care, Mike. Hurry back. I then headed. I then headed back the way I came towards the secret garden's entrance. On the way up the stairs, I remembered something. I felt like I was leaving something behind. I looked down at my pocket and noticed that it wasn't all bulgy. I didn't have the hourglass with me. Luckily, I knew where I had left it on the stairs. Unluckily, when I searched for it, I couldn't find it. I thought now that maybe I had dropped it on the way to the garden. I continued on my pace, only to be stopped by something un unexpected. Something startling and unexpected. The wind sounding alarm chimes from the garden suddenly went, were going off. I felt a gust of wind blow. I, I got a little nervous from this happening. And then I thought that the. I, I had thought that the only time that the chimes would blow was, was when the, there was a disturbance in the garden. I looked around from where I was standing, but I didn't see any danger. Nothing's here. I wonder why the alarms went off. Maybe because the soldier was gone? I mean, the island does seem to be getting disturbed because of that. Pretty much after I said that, that's what I fixed my mind to. I was now, now I just assumed that things around Altamar would just get all disturbed from the soldier being broken. I was just about ready to continue when... Mike! I look. I look to the inner part of the garden to see both Latias and Latios zoop towards me. They both stop on a dime right in front of me. M Mike, you gotta help! Whoa, 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 help with what? They're back. What? Who's back? Well, well, we meet again, you rat. That voice. I couldn't believe my ears. Was it really who I thought it was? I looked in the direction of where it came from. My eyes widened and my jaw dropped from who I saw. I I can't believe it! It's you two crooks! Latias grew scared and hid behind her brother and me. Oh, what's the matter? Not happy to see us? Uh, how the heck did you two escape the control center of the DMA anyway? Annie was about to say something, but Oakley cut her off. Is that any of your business? You know what, kid? You're a real pain in the behind. Someone ought to teach you a lesson. Latias did not like her tone, it seemed, because he grew a look of disgust. Hey, do not talk to Mike that way, you rotten thieves. Oh my, it looks like you tipped it off. Ah, he's just trying to act all tough. Of all this barks me nothing. Now then, rat, hand over the soul dew, because I know you took it out of the well again. Actually, no, I don't have it. Ugh, you little liar, I know you have it. Aren't you forgetting that you two used the soul dew and broke it? There is no soul dew anymore. 
Oh, yeah, I do remember that. It's a shame that beautiful jewel is gone. It was so shiny. Uh, I can't believe it was gone too. Uh, well, at least we can complete our secondary mission. We can still capture Latias and Latios for Giovanni. Oh no, oh, not this time. You're not even going to touch Latias and Latios. I won't let you. Well, well, Oakley, even if we don't capture them, we still have this neat thingy I found on the stairs. <clears throat> she holds out in front in front of her my, my ticket out of this situation. My eyes widen and my heart starts pounding. My hourglass! Oh, you want this hourglass? Oh, well that's a darn shame for you. I try to think of a lie to say. You don't understand. That hourglass is very dangerous. One wrong, one wrong movement with that could kill you. Ah! She jumps back and lets go of the hourglass. It falls to the ground but does not break. <laughs> a nice try, rat. I'm not falling for it. She picks up the hourglass and hands it to Annie. So far, our maid's on flip. Just hold it. She looks over at us. So there, Latios and Latias, are you two going to come with us nicely, or are we going to have to use force again? The first thing I could think of was to reach into my pocket and take out my decker, which I suddenly remember was in there. No way, you are not capturing them this time. Oh, look at you with your scary red knife again. Ugh, please, you failed to hit either of us once with it last time. You think this time will be any different? This, I suddenly remember that night where Annie flipped me out of the well, and how embarrassing that was. Doing so made me lose confidence. Ugh. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't, why don't we take care of you and capture both of them? Let's go, Ariados. She then sends out that blasted Pokemon. After she did that, she waited for several seconds. <clears throat> she looked around and was mi like she was missing something. As soon as she realized what it was, she turned and looked at Annie angrily. Um, Annie, what are you doing? And she looked at Annie when she wasn't paying any attention. Because it, she looked. She stared right in front of her towards Latios. Oh, now I get it. She was looking at Latios while thinking of what to do to capture him. But is that a disturbed lurk I see on her face? Annie! Oh, what? <gasps> Send on Espion already! Oh, yeah, right. Latios shakes his head at the scene they were performing. Ugh, how sad and pathetic those humans are. Annie, Annie at last sends out Espeon, and it looked like it, it wasn't too happy to see me. It gave me that angry stare and growled at me. And just like that, the war was beginning round two in the garden. And it's uh, and it started out with us three and them four giving angry looks at each other. I couldn't let them capture my two best friends. I won't let them win this time. Ugh, oh, that's right. I totally forgot. But with that cocky tone of hers, who knows what she's going to do. I have backup. She takes out another Pokeball. Seeing it made me grow nervous. What? But I thought you guys only had two Pokemon. Huh. Uh, we did, but on the way here, we took a Pokemon from a boy on the way to on the way to a hotel. You stole a Pokemon from a boy? Ugh, that's just cold. Oh, but it was just so cute. I couldn't help myself. I just had to have it. I bumped Latios on the side of with my elbow. Don't worry, it's probably nothing. Don't be fooled, Mike. I can tell that they're planning something severe just by looking in her eyes. Be prepared for the worst. Latias gave a worried groan. I could tell she wasn't prepared to fight. Let's have you meet your opponents, shall we? She tosses the Pokeball and it opens. Three of us grow as shocked as we can as can be when we see the mock Pokemon come out. Uh, uh, Garchomp? Eek! She closes her eyes and tucks her head. Like him? It's great to have him hypnotized to obey our every command. That's cute? Oh, you don't think so? <laughs> well, my definition of cute is any Pokemon that does exactly what I say. Oh, oh this is bad. A card chomp's physical dragon moves are incredibly powerful. And you're weak against those. I could hear Latias go behind me. Oh, why, don't you go, why don't you say hello to your enemies, Garchomp? The Garchomp gives a very loud growl. This scares Latias greatly. <laughs> ah! She turns ar around and bolts the other way. She, she flies away from the Garchomp as fast as she can. Oh no you don't! You're not escaping! After it, Garchomp! Take it down! The Garchomp then gives an another angry growl and just like that, takes off like a jet towards Latias. No! Sister! He too flies off towards Latias. It was it was one big and fast chase scene throughout the garden. When I when I watched it, I felt scared. 
Oh, this is bad. That car truck can fly just as fast as Latias, if not more. She's not going to escape. Garchomp, attack it with Dragon Claw. That's the move I fear the most. That It works so well against another dragon. Plus, it works even better if your opponent's physical defense isn't that high. That, that, the Garchomp swung its claws at Latias, but she dodged his, his move. However, instead, instead of hitting his target, Garchomp sliced a nearby tree with his claws. The tree fell to the ground with a large crash. Latios had to stop dead in his tracks to avoid getting crushed. Ah! No! 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 Latios hated what was happening to her in her garden home. She couldn't handle the chaos that was happening. Her brother didn't look too well either. He resumed chasing the other two with little confidence. The, other th the two thieves stared at the scene along with myself. I could see the excited look on Oakley's face like she was waiting for her plan to finish. Annie, though, with an awkward look like that, who knows what she's thinking. Oh, just look! Garchomp is going to knock Latias down at any moment! Oh, yeah, that's just nice. I wanted to help Latias out, but there was nothing I could do. It's not like I could help with the chase. The three of them were, f were flying faster than I could walk or run by well over ten times. I look at the thieves and leaves and think of attacking them, but then I look at their Pokemon in front of them. Both Espeon and Ariados were concentrated on me. I knew if that if I even were to make a tiny move towards them, they would attack me. I was stuck in a big hole this time, with no way to get out. The three of them were flying towards the, our location now, just as fast as before. Garchomp, use Dragon Claw again! What, hap what happened next gave everyone a shock. The Garchomp continued to chase Latias for a bit, then he gave a grin and stopped chasing her altogether. Latios wasn't prepared for that, because he flew right into Garchomp's trap. The instant Latios got to him, he was powerfully slashed by Garchomp's claws. The hit made Latios faint instantly, and he dropped to the ground right in front of us. Brother! Whoa, Latios! I ran towards Latios to help him, but the Garchomp landed right in front of his prey and growled angrily at me. Back off! This is mine! I did back off about ten steps after that. I wanted to help my buddy, but I was no match for that guard job. I felt so bad. <laughs> well, look at this! Not what I was expecting, but job well done! The guard job looked like he was proud of himself for knocking out Latios like that. It probably doesn't even know what it's doing. Oh, come on, Annie, let's get the net around Latios! The two of them then, then start tying a capture net around Latios. Is that how you spell tying? <laughs> Never, anyway. Both Latias and I. I know, sorry, I added comedy in the middle of a nasty scene. My apologies. Both Latias and I stay still and watch them and do it. Oh, just the scene made me feel terrible. I really wanted to do something to set him free. Brother! No! Now the two of them successfully caught Latios. Again. How could this happen twice? Ugh, if only he didn't. If only Annie didn't have the hourglass. Well, Latios is all done. Excellent. Now there's only Latios to go. And it's nowhere near as strong as Latios. This should, this should be easy. Latios is strong. Or at least, I think so anyway. You see that, rat? I always get what I want. And there's no point of you trying to save these precious friends of yours. You, you don't and never will stand a chance. Now, Garchomp, uh, how will you, how about you show him how to capture an enemy? I suddenly grew scared. Who knows what that Garchomp was going to do to me? That grin on his face didn't look too good either. I didn't want to fight it, and I put my dagger in my, in my pocket to give a message. Well, it appeared that the other Garchomp failed to see that message because he ran up to me and tackled me to the ground. I could feel my back whack on the rock-solid ground and the hard pain that came along with it. While I was on the ground, the guard trunk pinned me down with both of its claws. I couldn't move because of that and the harsh back pain. Mike! She was petrified. She couldn't handle having the two of her closest friends be attacked. Oakley laughs at the scene and her and Andy walk up to, up, up to and look at me. What's the matter, Rabbit? Is the Garchomp too tough for you? Oh my, I thought you would put him more of a fight than that. <laughs> You're terrible, you know that? Oh, an insult? Well, I shouldn't have to take that, should I? How, how about I have Garchomp here practice his moves on you as a response? No way, you wouldn't dare. 
Oh, you don't think I will? Well, Garchomp, power up my Dragon Claw. Oh, but don't hit him with it yet. I want to see him cry with fear first. <laughs> the, the Garchomp tightens his grip on me with his right paw and lets go with me with his left. The left paw was starting was starts glowing white and the claws extend. Boy, will that hurt if it hits me. Well, okay, I'll be nice enough to make a deal with you. If you can get Latias to get captured for us, I will have Garchomp let you go. No way! That's not being nice! You planned this right from the start! Oh, oh look who's smart! <laughs> well, I guess Little Bass can have some intelligence. So, uh, are you going to... Are you, so, are you, uh, so, are you sure you don't want to go with the deal? <laughs> I look up at Garchomp and then in then the distance to see Lazios. And then back at the thieves. No. I would rather have my face slashed to pieces than have Lazios captured. Go ahead. Have Garchomp hit me. Well, okay. If that's what, really what you want. Garchomp, use... No! Her, her loud yell made everyone look up at her. Latias flies down and stops right in front of all of us. She tries to go as close to me as she can so my amulet can translate her language. Please, don't hurt Mike. I give up. Well, what do we have here? Two nice surprises. Latias is coming to us and she can talk. I never knew she could. Latias comes up with something to say that hides the ability of my amulet. I can use telepathy to talk with others sometimes. But please, I will agree to go with you without a hassle if you promise to let Mike go. Latias, what are you doing? I can't allow you to get hurt. I just can't. Oh, please, let's just make the deal that was discussed. Well, I suppose we could. That is, if everyone agrees to do it. I look over at Latias. She was giving me that please look. I guess I don't have a choice. <sighs> Fine. Yes. I agree. You can get you get Latias for my freedom. <laughs> Alright then. But I'm not releasing you until Latias is fully captured. Here's the other net. Oh, but please don't shark me when I'm in the net. I beg of you. Please. I won't try to run away. Oh, uh, I think we shouldn't. Uh, really? How do we know for sure that she won't try to flee? Because Latias is always honest. She never lies. Uh, fine, whatever. Just don't try anything funny or else we will use force. Now come here. She goes right over to them and just like that with ease, they put the capture net around her. I can't believe I let them do that. Well, I guess either way they would've, she would have gotten captured. We just saved my face from getting ripped apart. All right, we're done. <laughs> Look at that, Annie. We successfully captured Latias and Latios for the boss. Oh, won't he be pleased? <laughs> what about Mike and Garchomp? Oh, yeah, Garchomp, let go of the rat and come here. <laughs> At last, he lets his, let go of his grip on me. My back was still hurting, so I leaned up over a little. The Garchomp walks, walks to the thieves, and Oakley returns it to the Pokeball. All right, now we need to take these two to our vehicle. Now, now listen here, Rad. If we catch you anywhere near us, we will knock you out. So don't try anything funny. <laughs> Both Vespion and Ariados give an angry look and growl at me. All right, I won't. Okay, now let's get going. The two of them grip the nets and drag the Lattes behind them. I sit there and watch the two of them take the Lattes away from their garden home. The Aspion and Aridos take one last look at me to make sure I was not following them. But I'm just sitting there motionless. I sit there, frozen and in disbelief, for well over three minutes. I then snap out of the trance and think of what happened What happened again. What the heck did I just do? I then ignore the remaining back pain and get up on my feet. Ugh, ugh, I, can't, I, ugh, I can't believe I just let them capture the Lattes like that. Ugh, I won't let them get away with them. I know there's something I can do. I then, and then all of a sudden I bolt towards the garden's entrance. Now my determined mood is back. I was going to try to rescue my buddies. However, I ran into a prob when I got to the other side of the tunnel. I had no clue where the thieves went from here. What, did they go straight on? Or down the right path towards Lorenzo's house? I had no idea. And not a lot of time to think. I noticed by the water fountain there was a Pidgey taking a drink. Maybe he saw which way they went. That is, if he didn't just arrive there now. After he was done drinking, he turned around and just stood there. Now is my chance to ask him. I walk over to the fountain. Hey, Pidgey. 
The Pidgey just looks at me with an aggravated kind of look that looks away. Pidgey, I need your help. I just need to ask you a question. Go away, human. I'm not in the mood. Oh, please. I'm sorry if you feel bad, but this is really important. I don't care. I'm too angry to answer any questions. I just saw the great guardians of this place get dragged off and captured us by these two humans. What will our home become without them? That's what I wanted to ask you about. Which way did the humans take them? The Pidgey grew surprised. Oh, they went down this path here. But I don't know where they went from here. Why? You're going to try to stop them? Yeah, I was. I need to rescue both Latias and Latias. No kidding, huh? You know, I wanted to try to stop those humans myself, Ugh, but I'm nowhere near strong enough. That's why I'm so angry. I'm just letting them get away because there's nothing I can do. <sighs> I wouldn't say nothing. You seriously think I could fight them? No, not that. But you could help me locate them for me. Oh, I get it. I fly above the buildings and try to spot them from above. Exactly. Please do that for me. With honor. Okay, here I go. The Pidgey flies up high above the landscape to try to find the thieves. Only about 30 seconds he gives me a shout. Ah, they're over there. They're putting the guardians in a boat. Uh oh, we don't have much time. Pidgey, please escort me to them. Right, alright, follow me. The Pidgey then starts to fly down the path with me, with me following him. He takes a left suddenly down an alley, uh, alleyway and I follow him down there. While I was taking the turn, I noticed a small green figure in the corner of my eye. It was down the other path. I quickly forgot about it, though, and then turned my attention to the Pidgey, who was take, taking a right down the, down the next alleyway. I, I too, took the right. In the distance, I noticed that this path looked like it ended at a waterless canal, and that canal entered the ocean. On, on the ocean, next to the empty canal, I saw the thieves in their boat. It looked like the, that they were just about done floating up the lotties. The Pidgey noticed I stopped moving and flew back to see me. Hey, those evil, those evil humans are right there. Are you going to fight them? Yeah, uh, I was just thinking of how to approach them. Oh, well, be careful. They have an Espeon and Ariados that look really strong. And, and they have a Garchomp. It's just not out. A Garchomp? You mean that large dragon thing? I'm not even close to a match for one of them. Well, there's no way I can help you now. You did, you did your part by escorting me here, Pidgey. And very well, too. Oh, well, thanks. Well, here it goes. Wish me luck. I am. I hope you beat them. Hey, wait a minute! How is a human talking with me? You just noticed that now? Well, I can communicate with Pokemon using this amulet I have around my neck. <laughs> Neat, huh? I'll say. It's not every day you get to have a full conversation with a human. Oh, now go! Go rescue them before it's too late! Right. I, I started to state down the remainder of the alley. While I was doing that, I came up with a plan that I thought could work. If I could just find a way to get the hourglass back, I could prevent all this from ever happening. I just got to the end of the alley. It stayed up against the building. I poked my head out to see the, what the thieves were doing. I could see Latias and Latios in the back of the boat being secured down by the thieves. I saw that Latios was still passed out. Near the, near the boat were Espeon and Ariados, both looking out into the ocean. <laughs> All right, both Latios and Latios are safely trapped down. Strapped down. <laughs> Good. They shouldn't be able to fall out or escape. The two of them walk walk away from the back side of the boat. Latios is uh, is trapped, but she can manage to get her head up enough to look around. She then notices me in the alley, and grows happy to see me. Mike, is that you? To the thieves, all they heard of, out of Latios was a high pitched whining sound, which draws them. Which draws your attention to her. What is what is it squawking about? I don't know, but it was it was quiet up until now. <clears throat> Oakley notices that Latias is looking towards the alley, and I that I was hiding him. I pulled my head in before they noticed me. Now I could hear the two of them start to walk to my alley. I knew that only in second I was going to be spotted, so I stepped out in front of them to make it look like I just walked along, walked along out of there. You again! What a surprise! I knew you would come back! The Espeon and Ariados quickly ran over to them and looked at me angrily. Look, I didn't come here to make trouble. I just want to ask you a- oh! <laughs> I could feel I was being hit by something. The force was too great and I fell to the ground. I could feel myself grow weaker by the second. Mike! 
Hey, nice work with Psychic and Nightshade, you two. That'll teach him a lesson. Uh, I, I just wanted to ask you a question. Really? How dumb do you think I am? I just lay there with no will to get up. I could feel my consciousness slipping greatly, and the thieves' voices grew more faint. I gave him a chance. He's not going to get off the hook this time. What are you going to do with him? Oh, oh, I have a good idea in my mind. I think we... And, and right there is when I fully passed out. <clears throat> I don't know how long I was out for, but it felt like hours. I could feel myself waking up slowly. I, I, I first could feel the stone floor I was lying on. This reminded me of that other time I got knocked out. Was I in the secret garden again? I forced myself to get up, but I couldn't quite yet. Oh, thank goodness. He's waking up. Hearing Latios' voice made a sudden burst of energy flow inside me. I sat up and opened my eyes. What I saw was a huge shocker. I looked around to see that I was in a cell. Like a prison cell. I was in a jail. What? Where? Where am I? You run a facility where they keep captured Pokemon, Mike. It is connected to the main Team Rocket headquarters building. I look around. I look beyond the bars to my cell to see Latios in a cell of his own. Seeing him behind bars made me feel terrible. Mike, over here! I can see you. <clears throat> right next to Latios, the cell on uh, the left was Latios in a cell of her own. She looked so scared and sad for being in there. I, I look at her from where I was standing. <clears throat> I'm happy to see that you're okay, Mike. I'm not happy at all. Look at you two! You're stuck in jail cells! What have you done to deserve what have you done to deserve that? The two of them don't say anything to respond to that question. They both knew that they shouldn't belong in there. My point exactly. Hey, what's going on? Where am I? That voice sounded familiar, and it was coming from the left side of my cell. I try to look at the cell beside me. But the way the prison was designed, I could just barely see the front of the cell. It turns out that there was a Pokemon in there. Why am I here? Where's my owner? The poor thing is all confused. I feel so bad for him. Who is that talking over there? It's that Garchomp, Steve's soul. Garchomp! I suddenly grew furious in a rage. Oh, what I ought, oh, I ought to beat that living daylights out of him. Come here! Without even thinking, I start to spaz out and stick my hand to the bars trying to reach him. Mike, calm down. He's not a real enemy. I do calm down, but I still feel angry. Why do you say that? He almost ripped you apart! Yes, but he was hypnotized into thinking I were, that we were against him. He's not a bad Pokemon. How do you know all this? Well, I woke up during the trip here and I heard the thieves talking about this place and about Garchomp. But I believe that they mentioned about Garchomp being hypnotized right before they attacked us. Oh darn, yeah, I remember that now. So could someone please tell me where I am? You're you're in a Team Rocket jail that's part of their main building. I was captured by them? Ugh. My trainer told me about those goons, but I never thought I'd be captured by them. I'm, I'm so sorry. No matter. I'll get back to Jacob if it's the last thing I do. First thing to do was to smash my way out of the cell. He started to power up a Dragon Claw again. I wouldn't do that if I were you. These walls have electric shockers on the sides. If the guard sees you try to escape, he'll activate him and shock you. So that's what those sphere things on the wall are? Electric shockers? <laughs> yeah, electricity doesn't affect me. Let them shock me all they want. But it's plasma bolts, and even plasma enhanced electricity can hurt the ground type. And it does hurt. Ugh. Them guys thought of everything, didn't they? So I guess there's nothing I can do. The guard chump just gives up and sits down. It appeared that he to be the safest thing to do for now. <sighs> so you say that I attacked you guys? Well, yes, you did. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I don't know what I was thinking. I never met you two in my life. Although, as I look at you two, you do look very familiar. Who are you? Well, I'm Latias, and I'm Latios. That's it! You two are the keepers of that island I was on. Wait, and you two got captured? What's going to happen to the island now? I have no clue, my friend, but whatever it is can't be good, I tell you. <laughs> Suddenly, we hear a door open in the distance, and then came the sound of people talking. Ah, someone's coming! Just like that, everyone grew silent. 
Together, we, we watched the three of the rocket grunts walk over towards our cells. They were talking as well. So, who do we bring to the lab? Uh, I'm not quite sure, but the three of them look around on the third one points of the cell. Here, Lassie well, asked, the red and white one. That's who we need him now. Lassie well, grew very scared from saying that. And she hides in the back of the cell. She didn't turn invisible, even though it wouldn't matter. All three grunts were wearing invisible specs. <laughs> One grunt pushed the button on the, on the and the bar of Latias's cell retreated through the floor. The second grunt walks in there and corners her. Come here, you. He then puts a noose around Latias's neck, like one you would use to restrain a mad dog. He then u uses force to get Latias out of the cell. I could hear those cries she gave, and they were terrible. No, help, brother! Latia squirmed to break free, but she, but uh, like she did to me on that one time. Now all three grunts were holding on to her. There was no way for her to get out of their clutches. She looked too petrified to do anything, and now she was being dragged by Latios' cell. Ugh, let go of my sister! Let go of her! Latios then started slashing the bars of the cell with his claws, bashing them too with his head. The grunts looked at him with shock. Whoa! Would you calm the heck down? Then the grunt pushes the red button with a lightning bolt on it next to Latios' cell. The, s the spheres glowed purple and then shot Latios with a plasma bolt. He cried out in pain and fell to the floor. Latios! The thieves then continued forcing Latios through the rocket prison with their crying for her brother along the way. Latios gets up now and, and him and I look at the grunts and take, as he, they take his sister away. Latios! After they were completely gone, I'd sit down near the front of my cell and put my hand over my face, almost f starting to cry towards the scene. I could feel the feelings of depression and hopelessness fill up inside me. How was I ever going to get out of this one? And that is the end of part 8. And luckily, Microsoft Word didn't leave a little extra hidden, like, bonus excerpt to the next part. So you're going to have to wait till next time. How's that for a cliffhanger? Has nothing to do with Pokemon Heroes, does it? <laughs> so, for part 9, you're going to see what happens next in the Team Rocket, Team Rocket Prison. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that, and in case, I, in case wondering, alright, I know I didn't write this in the book, but in case anyone's wondering why Latias didn't attack the, uh, the Team Rocket, Guys, well, a lot the Latis believe that really using moves against like humans is not really necessary. But and of course, Latias was completely petrified, so she really didn't know what to do. So that's the reason. So I hope you guys enjoyed my my Oakley voice. I kind of did. It was fun spazzing out and sounding like a like a diva chick. <laughs> <laughs> so, what will part 9 bring? Well, I know, but you don't. So stay tuned next time, and I promise I won't make a huge gap, because I know you guys are interested to see the uh, the next part. So, with that said, thank you for uh, watching slash reading, and I will see you next time.